Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to my 2021 first half of the year anticipated releases. So a couple things. I already have this video set up to go and not that ev like everyone should put out what their anticipated releases are but it made me like giggle because it's just that like time on booktube where everybody puts out this video um and what's great is that I've watched a lot of people's videos and we have some overlap but in general the books that like we want to read compared to each other they are a lot different so that's what makes these fun is that there's going to be some crossover from booktuber to booktuber, but in general, they can be pretty different too because we all, you know, have different favorites and different things that we love. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what mine are. I'm doing mine from January to June. I'm going to do the first half of 2021. Um, also, a couple things. Um, because I love so many indie authors, sometimes they don't announce their books until right before. So I'm making this one for the first half of the year because I want to talk about a couple of the books that don't come out until like June and stuff. But I may do another update in like May where I talk about the summer books or I'll do like overlap. But I want to get my video out now because a lot of you are asking for it because other people have put up theirs. So we're going to go ahead and do it. So the way I'm going to do this is that I'll do the ones that I have arcs for um, and as well as the ones that I'm most excited for. So first up in January, um, there is a lot coming out in January. Um, on the 5th of January, we have Abel by Katie Robert. I have already read a arc of this book. I <laughs> really enjoyed it. This is the beginning of her Sabine Valley series. It's going to be seven books and it's about seven brothers. And each of these is a menage. So it'll either be male, male, female, or male, female, female, which is pretty exciting. Um, because the setup of this story is it does cross over from the Wicked Villains. Specifically, it crosses over with um, Beast's ex-lover and Monroe's family is from Sabine Valley. So that's kind of the crossover. Um, we will get to see who Beast's ex lover is he's one of the brothers and it's really exciting so the kickoff of this story is that these seven brothers their family was betrayed and there are these certain like they're almost like gladiator games that happen and the oldest brother abel goes in kicks everyone's ass and then him and all of his brothers get to pick a bride and they can brides can be males or female it's just the term for what your bride is called and then all of these brides, some of them are already in a relationship, so then they take both with them. Some of them, there's someone else who already loves them, so there's a contentious there. But in general, these are all kind of like hate to love, so lots of hate stuff happening. <laughs> and yeah, it's the first one was really great. And to me, this series has one of the more complex stories that I've seen in her uh, self-pub work, so it's pretty exciting. Then, as with a bunch of people, there's a lot of stuff coming out on the 12th. Um, for me, I just have two on the 12th. I have Roommate by Serena Bowen. I have not read all the True North books, so that might be something I try to do. But I'm most excited for this one because since it is a spinoff, I think I can just read it. You can read most of Serena's books on her own. But, you know, I like to read series in order, even if they say they're a standalone series. I just like to read things in order. But this one is supposed to be a, like, enemies to lovers, but they're roommates, and it's a male-male romance. And him and us were two of my first male-male romances I ever read, which is crazy that that was in 2020. I mean, I'd maybe read one or two before, but um, For Real by Alexis Hall and him and us are like the first male-male romances that were like really romantic that I read. Um, so I'm very excited for another male-male romance by her. Then one that I have an arc for is Ever After Always, and I believe that this is the third book in the Only When It's Us, or it's like the Brothers series, but this one is A Marriage in Trouble. I got an arc for this. I have not read the other two books, but guys, I will, I promise, because both of those books are, the first two are in a secret TBR, which I guess is not a secret, but I'll be reading those before I read the arc for that, so that's fun. Um, then... On the 19th, this is actually a YA book, and it's called Winter Keep by Kristen Kishore. So way back at the beginning of this channel, I did a review for Graceling. Um, Graceling, I read this book many years ago, but when I first started my channel, I was doing 
some reviews for some of my old favorites. So you can go back and find this video, but I was like 80 more pounds back then and didn't know what I was doing. So just keep that in mind when you watch it. Um, but I haven't privated it because I believe in being proud of every step I've taken to get here. Um, and anyway, this is an, this I think is like a direct sequel to winter, um, or bitter blue. Is it? I think it's a direct sequel to bitter blue and I'm hoping that this means that there's an HEA in our future because I'll tell you I read Fire and Graceling by this author and their companion novels um, about different women and they both had one of them had an HEA but the other one had a happy for now which was annoying and then there was Bitter Blue which is a sequel that takes place 10 years after Graceling and is about a different character and that one didn't even have a happy for now because these aren't romances, that's the thing. They're YA fantasies. And they don't have to have it. But I was like, come on. Um, and it's about this girl who, like, she's a really young queen. And there's a whole bunch of things. But anyway, this series holds a lot of nostalgia for me. And I'm really nervous because if you are a longtime viewer of my channel, you know that another childhood favorite of mine had a sequel. East is one of, it is still my favorite book, guys. Even after all the romance and beautiful things I read, East is still my favorite book. The author made a sequel called West, and I abhorred hoard it. I hated it. Hated it. And so I'm very nervous because I didn't love Bitter Blue, but Winter Keep, I mean, I'm going to have to read it, but things haven't been so well for my childhood books getting sequels. So I am anticipating it, but I don't know if I'm excited for it. If that makes sense. Don't know. Then on the 22nd, Cole by Eden Summers is supposed to come out. This is book six or five or six in the hunting her series it is a mafia series something like that and I don't know what's gonna happen in this one she's writing this series very interesting because not all of her characters like get an HEA after each book like not the way kind of like Carrie and Cole her characters it's a building on itself story but like each character has her HEA after each one and Eden Summers I mean it's a smart marketing thing but it's frustrating as a romance reader because you really have to read her series in order and you have to read all of them and I was just like screw you I'm angry but I also am addicted to this story so this one was about an FBI agent who is getting stalked by a mafia head and he actually kidnaps her and so she lives through this crazy adventure with him and then at the end of that book there isn't an HEA yet and then the next book wasn't even about them the next two books were about another couple. So we just left this couple hanging. So I need to read this book because I need resolution. But Eden Summers, damn you. You did a good job marketing, but I'm not happy. <laughs> so I need to read that. Then on the 26th, we have two books coming out that I want. There is Prince Charming by Kay Webster. This is a continuation from A Stroke of Midnight. This, I believe, is supposed to be a trilogy. There is not an HEA at the end of the first one. It had a cliffhanger. But luckily, Kay Webster keeps her books coming out pretty good. So this book, there is a, it's like a dominant sub kind of, mostly it's like degradation. And this girl has a sugar daddy who's like paying her to do certain acts for him. And she also has like evil triplet stepbrothers who are pretty cruel to her. And... I don't know, Kay Webster writes some messed up stuff, but I loved Stroke of Midnight. I have a physical copy of it that I got as a gift, and I can't wait for Prince Charming. Then A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Cameron comes out. I absolutely love A Curse So Dark and Lonely and A Heart So Fierce and Broken, and I cannot wait for A Vow So Bold and Deadly. I thought that I got an arc for that book, but all that it was was a sample, and I fucking hate when Net when NetGalley does that, when the publisher offers just, like, a chapter sampler. Like, why did you even offer it at all? Like, everyone's gonna buy it. You don't need the hype ahead of time, but why didn't you let me get a full arc? Like, I am angry, but it's okay. It's coming up, and I'm gonna buy her book and support her because I love Bridget Kimmerer, and I'm excited, but I was so sad. I was so sad. So... Those are all the January books. I want to do a little quick aside as well because a couple books were coming to my mind. So there, like I said, I love a lot of self-published authors and they don't always have dates set for their books. So there is two other ones. Speaking of, um, uh, what's her name? 
Cora Riley. Cora Riley. She has the next book about Abramo in her um, The Kimura Chronicles. I don't think there's a final date for that set, but I believe it's the beginning of the year. And that one, can't remember the name, but here's a picture of it. Boop, 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 boop. Um, and then the other one that doesn't have a date, which it could be fall in the first half of the year, it could be later, is The Stray Prince by Ella Fields. This is a sequel slash like companion to A King So Cold, which I love. It's in my like top romantic fantasies. So that book had a happy for now with the main like couple in that series. But then this is about another character, but I think we still get to see the other characters. So I'm really trying to be vague about it. But if you've read A King So Cold, you know, you know the stuff. So those ones I don't have dates for, but I want to say them. So then we get to February and I'll tell you the arcs that I have first for that. So on February 9th, I have an arc for the Duke heist, which actually just started. This is by, I don't know, but here's a picture. Um, this girl I think needs to kidnap a Duke for some reason. That's, I don't know. I got an arc for it and I'm super excited. And Reckless Road, which is book five in the Torpedo Ink series. I still need to read books for, I need to read before for, before I read the arc for this one, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, Christine Feehan, she's hit or miss for me, but when she hits it, she hits me real good. So I'm pretty confident that one or both of these will be good for me. And then I actually have a YA arc for a book called Bloodsworn. And I'll tell you, I 100% got it for the picture because it's like an ice horse. And I don't know what it means or what it could give me, but it's beautiful and I want it. All right. Other things in February. Here's where we get a lot of overlap with some other booktubers, right? So The Bride Bet by Tessa Dare. I don't even need to know what this one is about. I haven't read the synopsis for it. Don't care. It's getting read. I was so sad when it got pushed off, but I understand COVID's been hard on everyone. Um, on the 9th, there is The Raquel of Roth, which is by Amelia Emily Howard. This is the sequel to The Beast of Bezik. We already know the setup for this one because if you've read The Beast of Bezik, you know that it's about the sister. And at the end of that book, she's already with somebody. And then, th so this is a marriage in trouble because this guy, he's a bit of a deceiver and we're pretty mad at him. So I'm very excited to see his redemption arc. I love a marriage in trouble. I especially love a historical marriage in trouble. So I'm here for it. The cover of this, it's so beautiful. This one and My Darling Duke are the ones that I was confused, but now that I've read My Darling Duke, I wanna read this one. Let's go, super excited. Then on the ninth, there is also Dancing with Danger, which is book three in the Good Girls series by Kerrigan Byrne, which is a spinoff from the Victorian Rebels. It's about the five good daughters, like G-O-O-D-E, that's their last name. Um, and it's delicious. So I love that she has self-published books too that come out faster. Then on the 16th, we are getting A Court of Silver Flames. I won't even pretend that I'm not super, super stoked. I think so many of us who are into romantic fantasy or are booktubers at all, like Sarah J. Mass was our gateway. Like, I feel like that is the gateway to romance. Like there's Twilight, there's the Twilight people who got into it. And then there's the Sarah J. Mass people who got into it. Because if you liked fantasy and YA fantasy, and then you got into her books and you saw how deep and rich the romances were, it then like spun you off into being like, hey, maybe I just wanna read romance. So that is like my take on why there's so many Sarah J Mass stands and they feel like they need to apologize. And that's the same way that people feel about Twilight. And I'm like, don't apologize about anything. Any book that is a gateway to other books for you deserves its due, even if 10 years down the road, you can be like, wow, that wasn't my best choice of reading. At the time you read it, that book was everything to you. And that book got you to the next book, what got you to the next book, which brought you here to me. So don't you ever be ashamed of that book. And I know plenty of people will stand Sarah J Mass, but I'm telling you, she was my reawakening into romance because I was part of the Twilight Wave and it got me into reading tons of fantasy and YA and all that stuff. So I 
praise for Stephanie Meyer for that. And then after college was over and I had been through kind of like a, you know, I just wasn't reading a ton. I found Christine Riccio's reviews of all of Sarah J. Mass's books at the time. And she made me so excited to read. And so I did. I bought all the books that were out so far and I read them. And then once I was stuck, I just went bananas and started reading everything and I reread the Aragon series and Harry Potter and then I just went off from there and now I'm here with you guys. So I didn't need to do a rant about Sarah J Mass, but I'm excited for A Court of Silver Flames because I've heard nothing but excellence. After reading, seriously guys, after reading Crescent City and seeing where Sarah is going and after listening to her, she's done a lot of Instagram lives during COVID and she's done YouTube live shows with her husband, Josh, and hearing about the times that Sarah's went through, like grief, almost losing her father, um, postpartum depression, worrying about her writing career, all the pressure that she's under, she pours it all onto her pages. And also the fact that she's getting into some sexy stuff. And I heard hints that in some of her upcoming books, she might even have some like BDSM elements in them. <laughs> I will tell you, if there's a character who needs some of it, it's Nesta. Whether she be the, the dom or the dominated, I can see either. And I want it. And even if that's not Eve, even if there's just super dirty sex with Cassian, I want it because Nesta has some stuff to work through and I see a lot in her that I've seen in other stories where BDSM is so helpful to them. I am completely speculating that as well. I'm just picking up on hints of stuff that Sarah has said. I will love it whether that's in there or not, but my gut tells me we might see some of that. So anyway, all right, on to March. I don't have much for March. I actually don't have anything for March except for Wild Child by Eloisa James. This will be the next book in the Wild of Window Castle. I don't know if it's the final book. There are still some other siblings to go, but this one is about Thaddeus. The cover for this just came out. I, I haven't even, like, I know it came out because the announcement video was on her thing, but here's a picture of it. That comes out the end of March. I'm very excited. I want to get an arc for that so bad. I will beg, borrow, and steal. All right. In April, we have a couple things. I have an arc for Malice. This is supposed to be a sapphic romance about Maleficent, which it's kind of like Katie Robert also had done one like that too, which I wasn't a huge fan of, Queen Takes Rose. But this one is supposed to be a pretty dark fantasy. I have an arc for this. I'm excited to give it a go. The cover for this one's pretty good. <laughs> so very excited for that to happen. Then there is also on February, or April 13th, Broderick is supposed to come out by Katie Robert. This is book two in the Sabine Valley series. Very excited to continue with that. She's starting to put out little clips of it. Can't wait. Then on the 13th as well, there is Scoundrel of My Heart by Lorraine Heath. I have... I need to read more of Lorraine Heath. She's on my list of authors I want to read more of in 2021. I love that she's still writing. That's something that amazes me. That author, guys, have you looked her up? She has, like, so many books, and she's still going. Like, I love it. I love it. And then on the 27th is A Wicked Bargain for the Duke by Megan Frampton. Megan Frampton, I've only... Megan... Frampton. I've only read two of her books so far, but I have bought all of her books because they have adorable covers. Um, and I just want to support this author. She recently stood up for one of my friends on Twitter and I was already really starting to like her. She writes, the two that I've read so far have been very fun, um, sweet romances about this sister, this family of sisters. And I just want to support her. So I will be buying this one. I hope to, by April, have read all of the others of hers that I've purchased. But she just writes fun books. And the audiobooks are really great. So that is for April. What do we got in May? I know. I think it's March. I totally didn't write it down because I've already read it. But March, A Devil in Her Bed comes out by Kerrigan Byrne. Sorry. I've already read that book and reviewed it. So that's why I didn't put it on here. Um, but... A lot of my friends have this on their list and Crystal has an arc of it and I need her to read it because I need to talk to her about it so badly but I think she like doesn't want to read it quite yet because it doesn't come out for a while but Crystal I know you're watching this video read it so we can talk about it 
because Francesca <sighs> yeah Francesca is I, I'm not gonna say a single thing because if you haven't read any of the books I don't want to spoil it by saying it and if you've read the other two books I don't want to spoil it by saying it but Crystal and I did our first Rake Appreciation Society about the second book in this series and this one is my favorite and you saw how much I loved Hot All Scott and Bothered. So there we go. All right, now on to May books. Sorry about that, but I realized I forgot it because there is another book by Kerrigan Byrne on this one. <laughs> um, May 4th, it says The Heart Principle. I don't know if this one was pushed back again because I think that I took this off of Goodreads and I think I've seen some other people have different days. So I will put up here the actual time that this one comes out because maybe it doesn't come out in May, but I really want to read it. So it's an anticipated book, whatever month it's coming out, I want it. Then there's Tempting Fate by Kerrigan Byrne, which I think this will be the fourth and last book in the Good Girl series. Um, I love that there's one coming out like every month because I love Carrie and Burns, so good for her. Um, the only thing that I like don't like about the series is that they're basically a novella series because the books are all around like 200, 220 pages, but she's putting one out every month. So it's like, what do you want, Jen? What do you want? And I mean, I, will, I want the books, so it's fine. Um, May 25th, there is Her Scottish Scoundrel by Sophie Barnes. Don't have any other reason than Scottish is in the title. Because I still haven't read a Sophie Barnes book yet. But I keep buying them because her covers are gorgeous. So there's that. And then the last month that I'm going to talk about for this one is June. Okay. So here we go. These are the last four books that I'm anticipating for the first half of 2021. There is A Dance of Smoke and Steel by Mila Vane is coming out June 8th. So there's been some miscommunication about this for some people because... First, this book was supposed to come out the end of this year, which would have been amazing. Then it got pushed back into 2021 to February, and then it got pushed back supposedly to October of 2021. However, if you check out Mila Vane's website, she explains that Amazon moved it to the wrong day. It's actually coming out on June 8th. So there's that. I want so badly to get an arc for this. I was able to get an arc for Stone and Snow, but honestly, it was before things really blew up. So as soon as it's possible, I'm going to start poking at Berkeley and asking for it. I'm going to try Neck Alley if I have to. I will try Mila Vane herself if I have to, because she's very um, communicative and she definitely knows who I am. I know that sounds selfish, but like I communicate with her constantly because I'm always reposting her books and showing her books. So I will beg for this one if I have to, because I want it. So here's a little secret too, is that if you, well, it's not a secret because she announced it kind of on the Wicked Wallflower podcast, which if you don't listen to that, it's amazing. Um, she explained that her vision for this series is that it be six books long, but she didn't want to like overwhelm herself. So she's separating it into like three into like th into like two arcs. So the first main conflict of this series will be kind of resolved in A Dance of Stone and Steel, but there'll still be more to get through in the second trilogy. So she's like, I wanted to still give some people some resolutions so that if it takes me a while to get to this second trilogy, I'm not leaving people hanging for years because she's like, previously I have said I will make like eight books in a series and then I have burnt myself out. So I really love that she's telling us ahead of time, like, hey, there will be more in this universe, in this world. I just need to not rush myself. And I love that. I love that she's honest about it. I love that I know I will get more because this Barbarian fantasy series has, like, taken my book world by storm. I don't know what else to say, but it is one of the books that I've, like, staked my channel on at this point, that if you're willing to give it a try it will change you. <laughs> it's just that it's a hard sell for people. And I very, very rarely have anyone told me that they're just like meh about that book. Um, she's fantastic. I need to read more about this author. 
Then there is, on the 15th, we are getting Isn't It Bromantic by Lissa K. Adams. This is the fourth and I believe maybe final book in the Bromance Book Club series. This is about the Russian and his Russian bride, who I believe it is like a marriage of convenience slash their friends, but then it will also be like a marriage in trouble. And there's been lots of ups and down reviews about this series. I, in reflection, like the first book less than I used to. The third book is definitely my favorite. I didn't like the heroine in the second book. But overall, I think that this series is doing kind of like good stuff and it's really unique. And I heard that it actually has inspired some like male reading groups. Like that's really cool. Um, and I love that each book like heavily rests on a different trope. You know, like there was a marriage in trouble because of like sex reasons. There was an enemies to lovers. There was a friends to lovers. And now this one is like a marriage of convenience. Um, and I really love that. We got to see a little hint of it at the end of the third one, and I can't wait for the Russian story. He's been that, like, really unique, eccentric character, but I know that once we get to see him in, like, a sexual light, that it's probably really great. Like, I'm excited. Then there is Slow Burn by Olivia Dade. Boo! Boy, this is about Marcus's friend, who if you've read Slow Burn, you know that... His friend kind of blew up his own career at the end of that book through a very dramatic scene. And so Slow Burn is going to be his romance, and I'm sure it will have a lot of the repercussions of things we saw at the end of that book, which has me very excited. That was supposed to be a galloping heartbeat, but I don't know what happened. Whatever. Then on the last one that I have is June 29th, The Duke's Princess Bride by Emily Howard. So, all right, I got a little time now that I finished this. I'll tell you a little bit about it. So I've already read this book and it was originally supposed to come out the beginning of this year and then it got bumped because of sensitivity reasons. So I said this too when I read the book. This was a five star read for me. It was amazing. It was a childhood friends to enemies to lovers. She is a princess in a foreign land, um, British occupied, but I think it's in India. I'm sorry. It's been like two months since I've read it already. So my brain's gone. But I guess a lot of people had problems with it. But there's two things for me. Number one, the author did her research. This is an own voices story. The author is also um, of the same like heritage as her heroine. Also, our heroine is based on a real woman. So she did a lot of research about this, this person. Um... Now, my perception has changed just a little bit, even from what I had yesterday, because last night I had a live show with Eva, Eva Lee, with Crystal, and we talked about how we want there to be more diversity in stories, but we don't always have to perpetuate what was, like, history perfectly. Like, we can change some things to be more sensitive or to be more, you know, easily palpable because... At the end of the day, like it's historical, fic like it's historical romance, but it's fiction. We don't have to carry forward all of the bad terms that were used and all of those things to the story, right? We don't have to do that because we don't always want to shove those things in someone's face who's reading them. And I really love that perspective. This is a, Ava Lee is a very knowledgeable woman. Um, talking to her was just, it was amazing and it really changed my perspective. However, still, after seeing what the author had to say about it and like seeing what her research process was and that this was like a bit personal to her and in the story we're showing that the racism and the hate that this woman is feeling and the danger that her life is in, I found it to be a very powerful story to me. However, I don't know what the final result of this book will be because it was pushed back so far so maybe they have just changed some of the terms I hope they don't change what the story is of this book I just hope that maybe you know after some sensitivity readers they were like hey there's a different way you could show this same racism and like feeling without maybe alienating some people which I think is a completely valid reason I am not of the races that are being attacked in this book so it's not my place to decide that I could only give my review from my own thoughts, right? 
but in my thoughts I really felt empathetic and I wanted the best for this person as I was reading it because the way that the author wrote it I felt such empathy and love for the character and I wanted her to succeed so badly so anyway I am highly anticipating it to see what changes there might be as well as so that I can yell about it for my channel because one of the other things we talked about in the live show is that we want to see more diversity in historicals and we're gonna stumble and trip along the ways and one of the things we also brought up is that um, Ava Lee wanted to write a story about two gay characters and she felt that she couldn't do it because she wasn't a part of that community so we have someone who's a part of a community that she wrote about her her race she wrote the race that is her race is this but she still is writing it from a modern perspective which is all that you can do like she didn't actually live in that country and grow up in that time so there's only so much that she can get right does that make sense you know me I just want us to write good romances I don't want them to hurt anyone but the story that's told in that book you need to see the pain that the heroine was in to see how great she rises afterwards and that's what I believe about showing stuff like that but that's coming from where I'm at so that's all that I can do I can only bring who I am to it and I trust people who will give their opinions from that place you know like who have lived it I trust them to give good opinions so there you go those are the books that I'm most anticipating for the first half of 2021 I'm sure I will update this video um, soon when more things get announced um, here's to hoping 2021 gets us out of the hole that was 2020 but I have to say 2020 has been as good as it could to me for all the mental you know downsides to it I have such a great community in you guys I just hit 5k um, and I don't know how that happened like I thought well I don't even know what I thought but 2021 I have the highest of hopes for now um, just because 2020 wasn't all bad for me and maybe that's really privileged place to come from but I'm gonna take the joys where I can get it and having you guys as a beautiful community the connections I made this year has me very excited for what 2021 is going to bring. So thank you so much for watching this video. I put up new videos many times a week. If you're interested in more content, I mean historical romance, dark romance, book reviews, book blogs, all those things, make sure you subscribe for more content and maybe check out channel memberships to see if they might be for you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.